Hi everyone, it's Rax. Today was a pivotal day for Blizzard and Diablo 4. Today, the Season 4 PTR came out and we've never done a PTR for Diablo 4. So the whole thing could have been a catastrophe. We couldn't have logged in. And I'll be honest with you, I was pretty favorable about the changes before when we read all the patch notes. It sounded like the game was going to be really good. But we've heard that before and then tried stuff and then it didn't pan out that way. I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you everything that I wrote down that I'm going to send to Blizzard and everything that I found that really worked and things that I found that really didn't. But overall, I have to tell you, I am very, very surprised at how well everything went today. From being able to actually log into the PTR when it started with no issues, leveling up our characters, it was very easy to test everything. And I got to be honest, after I've spent, you know, however long 10 hours testing all this stuff and talking with thousands of people by the way at 5,000 people watching the live stream on YouTube that was incredible and there was like five or six thousand on Twitch as well it was just unbelievable um thank you for that after talking to everybody and going through it it, it just it just really seems like a win the level of polish here the level of effort into the game um is refreshing to see so let me take you through some of the things that I wrote down. I got about five pages here. We'll kind of machine gun through it. I've got paint ready if I need to explain something. We're also logged into the PTR. Let's go. The Pit, the new endgame system. It's a lot more fun than Nightmare Dungeons. It's like the Greater Rift system from Diablo 3. Now, the Greater Rift system for Diablo 3 itself was pretty fun, but the problem with the Greater Rift system is it was never iterated on in essentially 10 years. Like, nothing really ever changed about it a good base system never really improved upon. So bringing it into Diablo 4, which really has no endgame, is a good start, but we'll be looking for it to be iterated on, unlike what happened in Diablo 3. There's no objectives for you to do. You just kill stuff. When you get to the next portal and you click on the portal, I was wondering, oh God, is this going to be a huge load screen? Da, 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 da. Nope. Went right straight to the next floor and we're blasting. Another thing is it barely drops any items. I calculated you could do about eight pit runs, at least the runs that I did, before you have to go to town one time. That's amazing. That's exactly what I want to be doing. Imagine playing the game instead of looking through yellows. The pit does cost uh, an entry fee. It costs a rune shard, which you can get pretty much everywhere. And the pit is an endgame system. It only starts after you've beaten Nightmare Dungeon 45. So... The, qu the question that everyone will be asking is about the entry fee. Do you want to limit people in the pit? Well, keep in mind that the pit is the only place that drops master working materials. And the master working was advertised as an end game system, but it's like a, like a real end game system. It is tough to master work your items, as I will explain in a second. Some of you guys are going to get flashbacks to Lost Ark. Um, but it's more of an endgame system than I even thought. You are not going to be willy-nilly masterworking anything. So um, costing a fee and making it hard, even harder to get these masterworking materials, I think is actually finally going to be a fun way, because the pit is a lot more fun than farming durial mats, to actually feel like you're investing time into your character to do something. And now you actually have something to test your build against, the level 200 uber bosses. So they're finally starting to get some of these puzzle pieces right. Again, the pros of putting a limit on doing this with the entry fee is it buffs masterworking and the Stygian stones for the ubers, and it promotes playing more game modes to go find the rune shards. The cons would be limiting the fun event and it forcing people to do the other game modes. But overall, I would say that the cost of doing it is acceptable to try to make progressing in Diablo 4 feel like something that you're earning. Okay, now we're going to talk a lot about yellows here. Do yellows dropping makes sense in the pit. So I think here we got to go to paint. So there is this very weird thing happening in Diablo 4. Not sure if it's like the biggest problem, but it's definitely weird. So here you are at level 100 at level 1 and you're level 100 and you're leveling up, right? So let's look at the different item types. There is grays, blues, yellows, legendaries and uniques in the game, right? So grays and blues are like obsoleted by about level 15, right? And you're leveling up in world tier one and two until, I don't know, you're about level 50, right? And most of your gear is going to be yellow. 
that's fine. You might find a couple legendaries here and there, but you're going to be mostly picking up yellows. By the way, if you did not know, one critical thing about this argument is yellows always have two affixes and legendaries always have three. There is no way, as far as I know, to gain this extra affix. Even if you imprint a legendary power onto a yellow and make it a legendary, it will still base only have two affixes. Okay, so this is important for what's going to happen here. Anyway, so you're using yellows to 50. Now you're in world tier three until, I don't know, uh, 63 or something. And again, the world tier three yellows will be what you use in the beginning because there's that big in inflection point. There's a power spike. And then when you get world tier three legendaries, it's just going to completely obsolete the yellows. But you might still have a couple of yellows, maybe ish up to 63. Then you go to world tier four. Now you have ancestral items. And once again, the yellows might work in the very beginning. But anytime you get a legendary now and you replace it by, let's say, about level 75, now yellows have become completely obsoleted. They're obsolete for two reasons. One, they just have one less stat. And because of the stat condensing, the individual stats are so powerful now, missing an entire uh, affix is unacceptable. But also, yellows can't roll greater affixes, which we'll talk about later, which is the real endgame of Diablo 4. The, uh, the endgame of Diablo 4 is greater affixes and master working. It, it misses both of them. It doesn't have a greater affix, and it's missing an entire affix. So now, let's think about the pit. The pit starts at Nightmare Dungeon 45. So this is going to be... You're either going to be 100 or you're going to be a very high level before you even go into the pit. The pit, at the end of the run, drops four yellows. And the question is, why? Why did you drop me four yellows? What I have to do is I do eight runs, and then I go salvage them. There is no chance at all I will ever use them in current Diablo. No greater affixes, missing an affix. I'm already really powerful. The entry fee essentially is Nightmare Dungeon 45. There ain't no way I'm going to be wearing yellows anymore. They're useless. So now we ask two philosophical questions. One, and Blizzard doesn't even have to give us what the answer is. It's just a simple yes or no question. Do you have some kind of short-term slash immediate plan for yellows to have some kind of purpose beyond level 75? If the answer is yes, whatever. Carry on. We can handle this weird situation right now, even if you don't have it solved for season four, whatever. If the answer is no, I have a very good idea. Instead of dropping me four yellows in the pit, drop me four yellow mats. Give me the mats. You want to know why? Because then when you only drop me one or two legendaries or one or two uniques, then I can do 15 pit runs before I have to go to town. Don't give me yellows in an endgame system where all I will do is go salvage them if I'm never going to look at them. By the way, let's compare current day Diablo to Diablo on the PTR. Current day Diablo, everything you do fills your entire inventory with yellows, and you have to look through every single one to see if one is good, and you can make it into something great. Currently on Diablo in the endgame, yellows are absolutely, well, I can't say that they're useless. They're useful because the mats that they give you are very valuable. So you pick up every yellow, and you're happy to pick it up, but you never look at it. You just salvage it instantly. If I had to pick which of the two lesser evils I want, I want to just salvage them instantly. If I have to look through a whole inventory of yellows one more time, I, uh, I'm not going to be able to play the game anymore. So not the, the most gigantic problem in Diablo 4 currently, but yellows are very confusing. Like, what is their purpose in the endgame? If there's no short-term purpose, please, for the love of God, give us the yellow mats in the pit instead of yellows. No blues, no grays. Just give, a, just give us the materials and only drop us legendaries so we can keep blasting. Um, some future thoughts, as I said before. It's like a copy of Diablo 3 Greater Rifts. It's a fine baseline, but we need, it, we need surprises. We need it to be iterated on. We need some spice. And it would be lovely to have a leaderboard who has the highest pit clear. I mean, this is way more exciting than a gauntlet leaderboard, in my opinion.
They buffed Helltide. Helltide's way better. There's so many more monsters. There's so many ambushes and surprises and new events. It actually almost felt like a new game mode. They did a nice job of integrating some trap mechanics and some vampire mechanics into events that actually reward you very well. It was, a, it was pretty well done. I, I, I've got to point this out. I pointed this out about Lilith. Nothing ever happened. They did the same thing again. The trap events, the, the traps themselves are red. The projectiles they shoot are red. There's red fire coming out of them. There's red lightning coming out of them. There's red explosions. There's red meteors raining down from Helltide. The ground is red. The Helltide ground is red. The monsters that are attacking you are red, and the material that you pick up is red. I can't see shit. I'm, I'm not even kidding. I'm not colorblind. I can take the Enchroma eye test, and I'll ace it 100 times out of 100. I have normal color vision. Anybody that is even kind of colorblind, I mean, honestly, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's just one giant red square. So I guess it's, it makes the playing field kind of even. But I, you've, you've got to do something about this. Like, it's especially noticeable when you introduce traps that kill you, and they're also red. You're looking specifically for the trap mechanics. So you can dodge it and live. How are you going to? I can't see it, man. There's too much red. Same problem with Lilith, man. It's crazy. Um, you fill up on items about once every 15 minutes, which means in Helltide, you might have to go back to town to salvage three times in an entire Helltide. It's better than it used to be. You, if you picked up every item, you would fill up every five minutes. Um, if anything, I would like the drop rates to be a little bit lower here, if possible. But uh, the higher density is, is great as well. The Codex of Power, if you did not know. Now, every legendary power is in the Codex of Power. When you salvage it, it auto-upgrades it. Um, and to be honest with you, they just did a really nice job with it. The UI looks really good. They have tiers of the affixes. I didn't even know this was a thing. Like, it'll tell you, oh, uh, Disobedience Power has 16 tiers, and you've salvaged up to tier 6. So it shows you, like, kind of a, the barometer of how close you are to having a perfect power. Speaking of perfect powers, when you get a perfect power and you salvage it, it has a gold border. It's kind of a nice little goal for completionists to get your whole codex of power with a gold border. It has a class icon, which will show you which, which powers can only be applied to necro or sorcerer. There's a search function. I tested it. It works very well. There are filters and favorites, which is good, but also has another problem. Um, so you can't use the filters or the favorites at the occultist. And let me see if I can demonstrate this. So if we press Y and go to the Codex of Power, um, you can go in here and you can mouse over any aspect that you really, really like, and you can favorite it. So I press spacebar. It's got the little favorite icon. I go through and I, I say which ones I really like. Okay, cool. That's a nice feature. Okay, so then you go to the occultist, and by the way, if I forget to mention this, they consolidated all of the towns. Look, they have all the vendors in a little uh, rectangle. I can't tell you the, the tears of joy that that brings in my eyes. I've been begging for this since the alpha, like the alpha before anybody played. I was like, guys, the blacksmith is over here. The jeweler is over here. I I'm trying to blast here, man. You're not letting me blast. By the way, look how cool my golem looks right here. Um, you're not letting me blast. They said, no, Rax, you don't understand. This is an open world game. We want you to kind of move around and see everybody. Oh, and then everybody hated it. And every patch, they make it closer and closer and closer. Well, now they're all like literally all by each other. So thank God. Thank you for doing that. God, that makes me so happy. Okay, now we go here. And now you can see that disobedience is favorited, right? So there it is. I can see that it's favorited, but I can't interact with it. I can't filter by favorites, and I also can't press spacebar and favorite stuff from this UI. And that's the things that I wish they would add, because the filter system that they have up here, where if I say, oh, just show me my favorite aspects, it's beautiful. And then you can see exactly how far you are with each of the tiers. So it's a beautiful functionality that I don't understand why they didn't build it build it in um, to the Codex of Power here. I would like to see you move it over here as well to show you what I mean. Um, another thing is when you see the final item, it doesn't have like a comparison window. It doesn't show you here's the old item and here's the new item that you're getting. That would be an improvement. 
Um, the preview show shows you that after you craft it, your gems are going to disappear, but your gems don't disappear. That needs to be fixed. Um, the codex lets you replace a power with the exact same power. So that would be something that you could fix. Another thing that you could do, this is like, this is like dessert. This is like an extra godly idea. If you would be willing to do this, the cherry on top. If you have a favorited power and you're looking for it in the overworld and you see something drops and it's a higher tier of one of your favorite powers, you could like recolor it or something make it pink or something oh my god that i favorited that power and that power is higher of the one that i need oh my god yes now i can go back to the codex and upgrade my gear that would be a nice to have but i want to stress in general for most of the functionality of how i thought it would work you did a very nice job here's the ways to improve all right so the rework on items probably one of the most important things i mean it's just way easier to process everything they said they were going to make everything simple. They did that. It was great. The number of items has went down tremendously. Again, you can run about two and a half Nightmare Dungeons before your inventory is full, 15 minutes of Helltide, as I already explained, or eight pit runs. It is a lot better. Uh, the pits are fine, especially if you salvage the yellows and just give us the materials as I asked for. These two maybe could come down a little bit, and maybe the crafting mats could be adjusted to compensate. Um, I would love it if I could do five Nightmare Dungeons without going to Salvage. I would love it if I could do half of Helltide without going back to Salvage. Um, maybe one day Blizzard will even be nice and give us a Salvage on the Move button. A Salvage Yellows on the Move would be beautiful. Um, if anything, I'd like these two to come down. The pit felt pretty good. So the, we already talked about it. The grays, blues, and yellows seem completely useless. We already talked about what's the plan for yellows here. Who knows? Grays and blues still drop in World Tier 4. I have no idea why. I say just salvage them and give us the mats. Okay. Greater affixes. So, greater affixes are the most important thing, I would say, in Diablo 4. Greater affixes are essentially your loot filter. So, um, I don't know if I have anything with a greater affix on it here, but greater aff there, this these boots, for example. These boots are a, uh, have a greater affix on it, and you can tell because it has the little star next to the cold resistance. So when I get a greater affix to drop on the ground, let's drop a lot of items here, you can see that this is the, great, the one with the greater affix because it has the Roman numeral I, indicating that one of the affixes of the three are greater which means that they roll higher, which is kind of the end game of crafting. You find a, an item with a greater affix on it, then you re-roll it, then you temper it properly, and then the super end game is master working it with the pit, which is, it's going to take some effort, which is a good thing. But it, when you're going quick, when you're going quick through a dungeon, you're killing stuff, da 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 and you're picking up loot, are you going to notice this little eye? I mean, maybe. Maybe some of you guys are eagle eyes, but I'm not going to notice it. And since this is essentially the only way of a loot filter, because you guys still haven't given us a loot filter, I feel like this has to be a different color. I feel like, like for example, you could make it red, like in Diablo 3, like Primal Ancients. Um, I think this is probably the most important change you could make to the PTR. If I could only ask for one thing in the whole document, I, I need you to make greater affix legendary items way more obvious. Because it needs to be important. And it's not just on the ground. When I pick up all these items, okay, let's put these boots here. This is a bad example because those boots have little dots on them, which is going to throw us off. Okay, we'll try to ignore the dots for me, even though the dots are annoying. But let, let's just pretend that these gloves had a great, oh, this glove, perfect. This glove does have a greater affix on it. This glove, look at all these gloves. Can you tell which of them has a greater affix? No. Because there's no indication. At the top, the little gray, or not the gray, the little bronze hue at the top here, that indicates that it's sacred, and a silver one indicates that it's ancestral. So, But in World Tier 4, you only care about ancestral. So these two things, these indicators are not really that helpful. You're just going to be getting ancestrals in World Tier 4. What would be helpful is if an item with a greater affix was glowing red. 
so you would know at one quick glance, this is the pair of gloves I need to look at. Because you need to hit the greater affixes on the stats that you care about. That's the end game. That's the only thing your eyes should be drawn to. If I could only ask for one thing, please, Blizzard, when it drops on the ground, give it a different beam, a different color. The Roman numeral is great. And when it's in your inventory, give it a different border that's super obvious. Please. If you don't do that, then people are going to cry and ask for a loot filter. Otherwise, people are going to cry and ask for a loot filter anyway. But uh, this is going to be something that you can give them that might uh, keep the pitchforks in the barn. So I have not played enough to make a determination here. Blizzard is kind of hinting that with all the changes, you don't really need a loot filter. And everyone in the world that plays PoE and Last Epoch is used to a loot filter. You customize it. You play how you want. It's fun. Well, right now it's pretty damn simple. You salvage all the yellows and you barely get any. You also salvage all the legendaries, at least in the end game, to upgrade your codex of power. The only thing you look at, you spend any time looking at, are the greater affixes. So if they make this change, if they make greater affixes very obvious, I'm not sure with the current state of the game that we actually need a loot filter. Maybe not. I, I hate to agree with Blizzard. I, honestly, I would rather them just give us a loot filter, but it might, it might be fine. Then you have to look to the expansion. Are you going to add new item class, new items, uh, new things that are dropping that we're looking at? If it becomes more complicated, it's going to give more of a reason to have a loot filter. But if you don't give us this, then I think we do need a loot filter. If you do give us this, maybe we're okay without it. Tempering. Tempering is the ability to add affixes onto your gear from manuals. Um, one thing that they did, that it was very, very smart, because I found a way to break the game, but then I figured out, chat pointed out to me, that Blizzard actually made it so you can't break the game. So I don't know, I guess I'll give them credit. Let's say that they did this to block it, but if they did it accidentally, then it was still pretty brilliant. So when you go to temper an item, when you go to add two affixes on it, um, you, have, you can only grab an affix from two separate categories, and you must grab an affix from two separate categories. For example, if you get a weapon, then you need to add an affix from the weapon category and you need to add an affix from the offense category. Can't have two offense, can't have two weapon. You can't have one and not the other. You definitely want to have both. So Bl Blizzard announced that they give you two free shots, and then you have five chances to temper it. And if you don't get what you want, I guess you could consider the, the item bricked or something. But when you combine it with master working, Master working requires, this is the super endgame system, it requires you to have a unique or a fully tempered ancestral legendary. It says tempered, but it's actually a fully tempered. Because if you only have one, if you only have one of the tempers, it won't let you master work it. But when you have two, you can. Okay, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start rambling here and get like I'm too complicated. So let me just summarize what happened here simply. There is some theory crafting about you could ask actually master work first in some situations and then temper afterward to get a much more powerful item or a much higher chance at the item that you want. But they require you to temper first. So then I said you could brick your item by only spamming that your tempering chances on a single class or uh, classification of an affix. But they put the two free ones that have to be used on different categories. So what that means is, is if you spam the offensive tempering nonstop, and then you run out of chances, you can still put the other one on for free, which will allow you to masterwork it. So if Blizzard thought about all of that, I mean, I, I think I made a video on it, and I did talk about it on stream. So if they thought of it on their own or they watched it and then they corrected it because of that, I give you massive credit because it seems to, a, I can't find a way to game the system. I can't find a way to manipulate it anymore, which I give you credit for. That was nice.
Um, there's no preview again for what what you're about to craft that would be a nice to have. Um, another thing is after you temper something, you usually don't get what you want, so you usually need to roll again. But you have to start over. Start over. You have to pick, go into the thing, pick the category, pick the one you want, hit re-roll. It takes it out. Do it again. Do it again. It would be nice if you just left in the one that you just used. Okay, master working. Again, this is more of an endgame system than I originally thought. First of all, the number of materials that you need to masterwork keeps going up. They are not giving them to you like candy. In order to acquire them, you have to run the pit. In order to run the pit, you need to get a, an entry fee into the pit by playing literally anything in the game. Now, what that probably sounds to you like, like hearing that, it's probably like, oh my god, Rax, that sounds like farming Duriel again. It sounds like this system into this system into this system for the one in the million chance to get to get what I want. I think it's far better than that. It's way better than that. It's way easier to get the pit keys. You will have the pit keys by the time you hit uh, Nightmare Dungeon 45. If you have a good build, you will be able to clear the first couple of rounds and be able to start master working. It actually feels about right. And another thing about master working, which is completely different from Duriel, is Duriel is binary. And Duriel also requires a group, right, to feel any, to feel any power. And what I mean by binary is you either get the uber unique to drop or you don't. That's it. There's nothing in between. Everything else about Duriel is just pure misery. And also you have to find a group to share the materials. Otherwise, you're, the EV that you're losing on doing the runs is so bad that you, you have this huge fear of missing out and then you want to quit the game. Master working is completely different than that. The pit is much more accessible. You can do it solo. And by the way, they made some changes to make it less powerful for groups where the leader gets most of the rewards. So it's not like you have to run the pit in groups all the time. Um, but also, master working is incremental. There's 12 levels, and at 4, 8, and 12, you get these massive upgrades. So you're actually upgrading all the time as you're doing it, and it's probably going to feel a lot better. I only played it for one day, and I can already tell you it felt a million times better, and it's a million times more fun than killing Duriel. So it might sound like this terrible system. It, it's not. you got to try it. It's like similar when you think about it theoretically, but it, in practice, it really isn't. And then there's a bug with the master working screen. Uh, they'll fix it. Okay. The cap for re-rolling, um, the highest cap I saw for two-handers was 7.1 million. It might be a little bit higher because my item power is only 920. It goes to 925. But every other item slot is less than a 5 million cap now. So I don't know how that exactly plays out with all of their changes. But in general, it should feel pretty good. It's, if, at, at a minimum, it's a hell of a lot better than what we have now. They consolidated a lot of the materials in the elixirs. Remember how you used to find gallo vine and a bite berry and all these different herbs and you have to pick all the right ones to craft your potions? Nope, it's all just called like bundled herbs now. They consolidated the mats tremendously from like, I don't know, let's say uh, 30, 25 flowers and different things that monsters drop like the, the bones and stuff into like four mats so it's just way better way way more simple just to go there and the elixirs are much better much more consolidated and there's some cool new elixirs in there that give you massive movement speed makes zooming around a lot more fun um another huge thing about ma the material consolidation remember another part that we hated about Duriel was you have to do the whispers to get the mats to do Varshan and you have to do this to go fight the guy that does the lightning damage I can't remember what his name is I don't know if I ever knew what his name was and get that mat and then you go kill Duriel and that you're like your whole day is planned out and it feels terrible now these materials just kind of just drop everywhere I got some living steel here I got a, I don't know whatever they're called a malignant heart over there I got a vial of blood to go fight Lord Zero over here thank you just let me play the damn game and give me some materials. And when I have enough, I'll go fight the bosses. If I really want to target farm it, fine. But almost nobody wants to do that. It feels a lot better just to get stuff as you play. Um, let's go into some miscellaneous changes. They put the NPCs by the town. I mean, thank God, finally. The gems are a lot better. They said that they changed them. They consolidated them. They have more powerful stats, a lot better. There is a, a change, by the way. 
there's a change to the game, and it is as brutal as you can... Uh, by the way, this guy's name is Who Fucking Farted. That's amazing. Uh, he's going to be in the YouTube video for sure. So there is a salvage all button at the blacksmith. Now, what you might say is, Rax, that's already in the game. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, yes, it is, Rax. No, it's not. This button salvages all items in your inventory. All of them. It does not matter anything. I tested it. It even salvages uniques. Before, it wouldn't salvage the legendaries. Um, it wouldn't salvage uniques. It doesn't care if you've marked it as junk. If you press this button, it will delete everything in your inventory, no matter what. It will irreversibly destroy all equipment. Are you sure you want to do this? Kapow. Gone. Trust me, it works with uniques too. I tried it. Chat dared me. First unique I find, see if the blacksmith will salvage it. Everyone bet that they wouldn't do it to uniques. Wrong bet. So, I like it. I mean, it says salvage all items. It's great. It's great for speed. You better not press it though if you got something nice in your inventory. I personally love that change. I can't wait to see the tears of the people that salvage the shackles that are accidentally sitting in their inventories. Um, there is a zoom out feature in the game. I can kind of show it to you here. So let me try to angle this perfectly here if I can. Okay, testing, trying to get it perfect here. I can't quite get it. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get the top of the screen. There we go. See how the top of the screen is touching the very top of this fire? Okay, well, if I go options and I have it, let's see. Well, I guess this is a bad example because I'm in town. I apologize. So let me show you this feature real quick. Let me go anywhere, uh, grab any waypoint, and let's get out of town here and let's get on our mount. I want to show you this. Some people were saying that this is, this is totally nothing. I, I wouldn't say this is nothing. I say it's something. Okay, so when you get out of town, it should actually zoom out properly. Okay, by the way, uh, look at my minions here for a second. Summon some minions. My, okay, I'm in world tier four. They're going to destroy everything. Okay. So let's put that box there right at the top of my screen. And it's kind of hard. Okay, the box is at the top of my screen, right? So if I go options here, view distance. This is as far as it goes. If I sweat it to the normal, what you're used to in Diablo 4, look, my screen came like halfway down on the box. Okay, you switch it back to view it far. We're about halfway on the box, so you get... I don't know, this much extra visibility on a normal monitor? Some people say, that's absolutely nothing. I, I wouldn't, I don't know, I wouldn't say that's nothing. That's it's better than nothing, in my opinion. They do some weird zooming in town, but I wanted to illustrate that for you. Um, Rerolling an affix doesn't show you its range. It's very weird. You reroll a two-handed scythe, and it says, you got 28 attack speed. It's like, okay, great, but... Is that good or not? I don't know. I don't know the ranges of the attack speed. This is actually what I rolled. This is actually the range. I looked it up. So you need to just show us the ranges as we're re-rolling. Oh, God. I don't know if this is something I want to get into. All right. Just for completeness, let me show you this. God, dude, we had such an argument about this, and Blizzard was watching. Blizzard messaged me after it. I think I lost 1,000 followers in, in this argument. Um. <laughs> And uh, Blizzard said they're going to have a meeting about it. All right, let's do it one more time. Uh, all right, here we go. Lucky hit up to a 20% chance to do something, right? <sighs> okay, all right. One last time. So let's, let's break it down in two parts. The, this is how the math works. Forget English, forget the words. This is how the math works. Every skill has a lucky hit chance. If you know what a proc coefficient is, lucky hit is Diablo's term for proc coefficient. They are the exact same mechanic. Okay, so lucky hit is on every single skill in the game, and it has different values. So whirlwinds might be 10%, okay? And uh, Hoda might be... 50%. I don't know what they are, but let's just say every skill has a different lucky hit chance, right? Now, the way that the math works, forget the words, I'm telling you this is how Diablo does the math. After it rolls, whether you successfully lucky hit or not, it is a 20% chance. 
That's how it works. It's not a 1 to 20. It's not a 0 to 20. It's 20. That's what it is. Confirmed by the devs. Okay. Now, let's read the words. And I do know why Blizzard did this, but I think it's misleading and potentially just straight up incorrect. So it says, lucky hit, which implies you got a lucky hit first. Okay, I, I understand that, Blizzard. We got it. We got to get the lucky hit. I understand it's a variable and it depends on the skill. I need to successfully lucky hit first. Then, up to a 20% chance is this is the part that's so confusing. The second part of the math equation is just 20. It's not up to a 20. The second part is 20 after you have lucky hit. The reason why Blizzard phrased it this way, per Blizzard, we, we literally talked about this today, is because if they don't do this, then people won't understand that the lucky hit is a variable here. So your chance could be zero if you just miss the lucky hit and up to 20 if you hit the lucky hit and then you hit the one in five. But the way that people that know the game read it is i have to lucky hit and then we think we're rolling like a a one to twenty percent chance or another zero to twenty percent chance when the second part of the equation of the mathematical equation is just 20. so the solution would be again we're trying to get rid of the damage on tuesdays we're trying to make affixes and items not complicated so you could phrase it as on lucky hit, 20% chance to do whatever would be way better and way more accurate. This lucky hit up to a 20% chance sounds like I'm rolling a lucky hit and then I'm rolling a 1 to 20% here as well. But no, it's actually 20. Oh man, dude, you should have been there for that argument. It was crazy. Crazy. Never again. Except I just did it again right there. Okay. One, uh, so I used to be an actuary. Shout out to all the actuaries out there. And in actuarial science, there's something called a reversal. Where when, when like a mathematical uh, outcome actually hurts a customer with no benefit to them, I think it actually in a lot of cases, a reversal is actually illegal. Well, the occultist allows you to perform a reversal. If you have 44 attack speed on your legendary and you attempt to imprint 39% attack speed, it'll let you. It's, it's called a reversal. You just spend money to get a worse affix. Someone pointed it out. It bricked their item. Some people are saying, let the people be stupid. Let them be punished. I'm just pointing it out to you. It's a reversal. If you want to block that in your coding, that's fine. If you want to let stupid people suffer, that's fine. Okay, another important thing. One thing that everyone almost universally hates in Diablo 4 are all of the events that you have to do. Free seven prisoners in the dungeons, pick up this pedestal, or pick up this uh, rock and go carry it onto this pedestal or whatever. So the cast time to, uh, to accomplish these tasks used to be two seconds. They have lowered it to 0.75. I'll be honest with you, it feels a lot better at 0.75. I just want to ask you, Blizzard, can you just make it instant? I remember Joe Shelley. I can't remember what the, what the subject was on. Someone's going to remember where he said in a campfire like six months ago, yeah, we had it at a number and we don't really know why we picked it. So we just lowered it and made it better. And then someone asked to just completely remove it. And I think maybe they did. I can't remember what it was about. It's, it's the exact same thing here. Blizzard, can you make these objectives instant? If I click on a prisoner, can you just be free? If I click on a rock, can I just have it? And by the way, while you're at it, can I ask you another quick thing? Can I carry two rocks? I got two hands. I mean, I know I have to have a sword in one hand, I guess, but can I just carry two rocks in, in my hands? Can I put them in my pockets or something? Instant cast, please, on the events. And can I carry multiple objects at the same time? Please. 0.75 is better than two. I'll take it. Can we get it instant? I mean, I might as well ask. Um, there are some bugs, whatever. They'll fix them. Remember, another thing about this season is we don't have the, even have the season theme. And, you know, 
I probably shouldn't keep pushing this narrative all the time. It's like not very nice, but the even team is the one that made the vampire theme. And that was the best season for Diablo four by far. It's the even team again. So maybe on top of all this, we'll actually get a decent season theme. You never know. Um, I need to test all of these. I will test it. I'll update the sheet. I'll post the sheet in the video if you'd like to read it. Um, Minion Necro is the only thing that I played. Uh, it's real strong, man. I was just, I was just crushing everybody. I was calling everybody else my jam. Someone, someone came up with this in my, in my stream. Everybody else is a jam, and that stands for they're just another minion. You're running around with 12 minions and a golem or whatever. And a barbarian came in and like tried to help me with an event. He was like trying to hoda stuff and charge stuff. I just, he was just like another skeleton to me because my 12 minions were just evaporating everything. It felt really good. Um, I, so I'm going to test, I'm going to test a bunch of different builds here. I got a bunch of them listed here that we'll go into depth with, but minion necro felt great. The AI does feel better. In the patch notes, they said that they updated the AI. I got to be honest. Okay, so Blizzard, you're, you're tweaking the minion AI. Can I, can I ask you again, please? Because I'm having nightmares over to the Wraith Lord over in Last Epoch that just doesn't attack. The minions still feel a little bit dumb to me. They do run ahead, and their offense is pretty decent, but it's still a lot of walking looking at the monster and then swinging the sword walk take a look and then swing the sword i would uh, the the mages are a little bit better because they don't really have to move they just keep throwing their bolts but the little the little skeletons that melee can you make them attack uh, much more reliably can you make them move faster or maybe i just need to stack more movement speed because minions now inherit 100 percent of your stats which is crazy i was testing it on the on the test dummy there, it seems to actually work. I tested weird things like damage to close, and that seemed to work. And it even seemed to double dip. If I got close to the monster, my minions dealt more damage. And then the minions also inherited damage to close. It seemed to double dip there, which is great. Uh, God, I hope Blizzard doesn't fix that. Um, but it's still a little bit too slow, man. Please. I, I would take a damage reduction on my minions they are just they just do less damage you just take cut off a zero or something if you would make them just attack much more violently please turn that knob even higher i, I would love it and one interesting thing is i got a i got an artillery shrine and my minions got artillery shrine they were running around and shooting like the laser beams everywhere it was awesome but then i got blast wave and then they didn't all blast wave and that made me really sad why don't you give all my minions a little mini blast wave too? Excuse me. Why do I only get artillery? That made me mad. Anyway, I'll test other things. Here's a bunch of remaining requested features. End game, bigger skill tree sets, rune words, pet staff space, loot filter. If we need it, map overlay, soul, self found, an army, group fighter, matchmaking, improved trading, clan, social features, more goblins, classes. And we definitely need more tomb lord, right? But, uh, you know, we've mentioned that a thousand times. That's not new information. Overall sentiment here is... I, I really love this patch. I think this season of Diablo 4 is going to be easily the best state of Diablo 4 I've ever played. going to be way better than the alpha, way better than the beta, way better than the bug-filled launch. Season 1 sucked with the malignant hearts. The vampire theme was pretty fun, and then they fixed resistances and stuff like that. That was probably the current high of Diablo 4. Season 3 was a nightmare. This PTR has, has made me pretty happy, man. I'm... I'm proud of the guys over at Blizzard. I think you did a good job. Nobody paid me to say this. I'm not, I'm not a Blizzard shill. I'm not sponsored to say this. Genuinely impressed. Some of the polish here, um, I did not expect. I was genuinely surprised. I thought your first PTR went very well. Um, continue doing things like this. Someone asked me right at the end of my stream, they said, Rax, does this make you really excited for the expansion? Do you think the expansion is going to be godly? And... Again, I'm going to give you the most realistic answer here. A lot of people on the internet think I want games to fail. It's not true. Um, I would say the answer is I don't know. There's been, there's been too many ups and downs, man. Too many ups and downs all the time. And let's be honest, there's been quite a few downs. Just because one good thing happens, it's not a cause and effect relationship. It doesn't necessarily lead to other good things happening. That's just not, not the reality of it lately. 
I think the base game of Diablo 4 now, once these changes have gone in properly to iterate on and put an expansion on top of, is much better. So that can be said, but will the expansion be godly and blow us away? I, I, even with this big W today, I think making that prediction is way too early. And I continue to remain, I don't want to say skeptical, but I'll just, I'll just take it as it is. I have a very real approach to it. Let's, let's see what happens. Today was a W. I'm genuinely impressed. I'm happy for Blizzard and I'm feeling good. If you jumped on the PTR, or even if you didn't, if you just heard my summary, I'd love to know what you think. I will be testing all these and I'll make more cool videos on fighting the Ubers. If you want to see them, I'll make sure spoiler alert. If you don't want to watch it, you don't want to have it spoiled. That's fine. The Andariel fight. Don't worry. Um, I'll test everything. I'll see if they actually made the dungeon events better. I'll test all the different versions of leveling up. We can actually level up in Helltide now. Might be better. I don't know. We'll see. And I'll, of course, I'll make all the builds for you. I'll, uh, I'll show you guys how to dominate. Have a fantastic night, guys. Uh, I'll be making a lot more Diablo 4 content, a lot more content for all the ARPGs. Uh, it's feeling good to be a gamer today. Thank you.